Okay, uh, hi everyone. Um, glad to be back here again. So today I'll be talking about smart sales. It is quite a different, uh, how would I say, like a different tech. Yeah, and I think um, at this I started this project about one year ago, but then it has been kind of like without without this talk, you know, I wouldn't have made much progress on it because it is one of my other um, abandoned or like you know like dormant side project. So can I have a show of hands? Like how many of you use hand drills like this? Okay, how many of you use this like at least once a month? How many of you use this uh, on a weekly basis or daily basis? <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, nice. So yeah, I, I use hand drills like pretty much on a weekly basis. And so like, I work on stuff, um, some minor woodworking. I've been doing like minor woodworking for about 10 years. So you know, when I first started, it's like, okay, I'm not really, I don't really know how to drill straight, right? You sometimes you drill at an angle, your your hole just like come out of your material, you screw up multiple times, or holes are not accurate, right? Um, so I always I'm thinking like how can we improve this tool? You know, over it has been like 30 years and battery operated drill will be around for a really long time. And a couple of problems, right? For example, like when you have a drill, okay, um, sometimes you want to drill a blind hole, but you don't really know how deep to go to. Some of you may use a marker to mark on your drill bit. Okay, I want to I drill up to like one cm or one inch. Some of you may put a piece of tape around it. Right to limit, kind of limit where you want to drill to. Another problem is that if you want to drill square to the surface, let's say you want to be perfectly perpendicular, right? What, what do you do? You sometimes you get like um, a square, try to like you know measure, try to like align yourself. Um, through experience, you might be more proficient at getting it really square, really straight. But let's say you are a new user, you go there, you, you try to drill something because you are. Maybe you're, you're you know, fixing up some new furniture that you get from Taobao, right? And then there's some problem with it. And yeah, you may screw up once in a while. Um, the last one is, let's say you want to drill something lengthwise. Now, this is probably the hardest thing. Imagine you have a piece of wood and you want to drill along the very narrow section. And you want to put a hole that is maybe like five, six inches, half a feet through it. I did one of those before uh, without a bench drill. And it was pretty terrible. It was a terrible experience. So, so these are kind of the, some of the hard problems you have with a hand drill. Uh, of course, you have other problems. I'll talk about some potential solutions later, right? Um, so, so what are some of the solutions to these problems? Okay, first one is of course experience. Uh, if you after 10 years, you probably can kind of drill straight, right? <laughs> but of course, not everyone has the luxury. If you are doing things like you know, uh, once a month or so, you don't really are not able to gather enough experience. Right, you can, yeah. So, with uh, less experience, you have a high error rate. With more experience, you have a low error rate, but you still screw up sometimes, right? There's no um, foolproof way of doing it. And of course, if you are too sleepy, you screw up more, evidently. Um, so, a couple of some things you can do you can buy jigs. Okay, you have a jig, you, you know, can make sure your drill is straight enough, but you, you kind of like you need experience to use it, right? Of course, you can get better tools. Uh, you can get a bench drill or standing drill, but I don't think many of us have the luxury of space. And this is really heavy. Is this a lot of energy? Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can get, you, you can put it there. Uh, I, I'm, really, I'm not too sure, but I'm sure some people have tried it before. Um, the only problem is that it's very really situational now. You can only do it like top down. And let's say you want to fix up a piece of furniture, you can't really use this. Right, so this is thing that came on Kickstarter two years ago. Have anyone seen this before? Called the X drill. So this was two years ago. Um, it is advertised as a smart drill. And downside is that it costs like 499 Canadian, Canadian dollars. Um, and until now, it still has not shipped yet. <laughs> right? Fortunately, uh, that time I was sour because I, oh no, I missed this Kickstarter. But fortunately, I missed it. <laughs> right. Um, you know, it also has other bells and whistles like, oh, yes, Bluetooth, yes, Wi Fi. I don't know why, but it's, it's all kinds of features. But, but I really like the concept. Okay, later I'll talk, I'll talk, I'll talk about why, why I like the concept. Now, it has basically um, I identified key features, right? Uh, the first thing is a digital bubble. Now, does anyone know what a, a bubble is? Like a leveling bubble, right? Spirit level. Yeah, like a spirit level. Uh, but for a bubble, it's usually on two axes, okay? 
Um, this thing basically has a digital bubble so that you know when your drill is perfectly straight, well, reference to gravity, of course. Um, and the second thing is that it has a laser distance measurement tool, like a, a bottom, it's just like a little like, laser, and you can measure the distance uh, of like how far your drill is from your surface. Now, the downside about this, you know, even though you spend like 499 Canadian pesos on it, it's not a Dewalt, it's not a Mahira. Um, maybe after one year, it breaks down. My, my Dewalt drill lasted me 10 years and it's still running strong. I went through like four batteries and the drill is not dead yet. So, so yeah, I mean, I'm sure some of you really like uh, Makita tool. Maybe some of you, uh, I think there are other brands over here. Um, I forgot the names, but I think these are two major brands. And so I think, I think of myself, when I, when I saw this Kickstarter, it's like, can we do something that can be used on other drills out there? Your own drill at home, your favorite drill, right? And the answer is, Others, this is what others have done. I did some research, okay? Like, has anyone done this before? And okay, some people, they will uh, glue a spirit <laughs> whole thing to the end of the drill. Others um, tried to duct tape a ultrasound distance sensor, right? I mean, yes, you can do that if you want. Um, so I, I was like prototyping uh, about one year ago and you know, I was thinking, okay, why not I use like some of the shelf things to achieve a similar result? Of course, this is really rough because I didn't have much time to like you know, make it really polished, but this is just like a rough prototype, right? And key idea is that um, we want, I hope that this can be open source. Now, in order for this to really work is that the folks using different models of drills will need to create 3D printed, um, 3D printed frames in order for you to attach sensors and of course, your the device onto the drill, right? Um, you know, maybe some folks in Martina, you create a 3D uh, printed mount for that. Some of you do work, but create a 3D printed mount for that. And ideally, this is shared in a central open source repository so that anyone who has the same tool, uh, you get access to a 3D printer, you print out this mount, right? Um, the designs are also based on off the shelf components. That is, a, this, I really like this sensor. It's a uh, we call it the YL, sorry, uh, VL53L0 is a time of flight distance sensor. Now, the difference between a time, like some of you might have um, experience with other distance sensors like ultrasound or infrared. The nice thing about time of flight is that it does not depend on the intensity of infrared reflection, it depends on the um, how fast light travels to hit the surface. So, what happens is that depending, uh, it does not depend on, you know, like, sorry the sensitivity or the precision is much higher. I think this sensor goes down to 0 0.25 millimeters. And so, okay, so back to the, 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 the key idea is that by using off the shelf um, electrical parts and modules, we would, like anyone should be able to purchase these same parts and recreate what they want on their own drills. Yeah, this is basically a uh, M5, M5 core tool. It is um, yeah, it's from one of those uh, surgeon companies. Internally, it is a ESP32 for those folks who are familiar with ESP32, Arduino, IDE. It's really easy to onboard, right? And basically this code is not just done up in like a couple of days. Yeah, there's an internal um, IMU with like a accelerometer. That's how I get managed to get the like the digital spirit level in there. Okay, so this is a front view. Um, later, I'll pass this around. But this is a front view where the distance sensor is mounted. Of course, we are open to exploring what other locations you can mount it on. Okay, and behind is the view of the digital spirit level. Uh, implemented a simple zeroing function so that you can basically, like, you know, you point your drill down, right? And then you can zero it. And, and so if your drill is like tilted left or right a bit too much, the Spirit level will turn red. Otherwise, if it's somewhere in the middle, it'll be green. Yeah, so a uh, couple of um, problems and lessons learned, right? Number one is that uh, when I first started this project, I was kind of stuck because I was trying, I was assuming that it needs to be a full fledged IMU. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with IMU, it means that it integrates an accelerometer, a gyroscope, as well as a, magne a, magne a magnetometer, right? 
And the downside, what I realized is that gyros suck. Okay, did you, did you know gyros just suck, right? And because you run integration over time, the error rate on the, on the gyros will just accumulate. You try to correct it by using magne magnetometers, right? But the downside is that magnetometers need um, calibration per location. So that's why sometimes Android tells you swing your phone in the figure of eight. Right? It seems stupid, but it, it works, right? That, that's basically what you do. You calibrate your little sensor inside. Now, the downside is that you know your drill has a big motor in it and it has a big magnet. So your magnetometer will not work very well when it's right beside the drill. So that's the downside. So okay, I scrapped the idea. I got rid of the gyro and magnetometer. I just used purely a uh, a what do you call it? A accelerometer. Of course, I lose. I, I only have my like, two axes to work with, so I lose the other axis. Um, yeah, another thing is that I mean, trying to get an accurate angle when you are, let's say, pointing your drill. Okay, so this is like my prototype over here. And let's say you want to point it at a wall and you're trying to figure out like the angle, whether you are tilted too high or too low. Um, it's, it's a hard problem because just how would I say the accelerometer only allows me to measure the angles of tilt when the drill is pointed down, right? Which means that if I tilt left, right, forward, backward, yes, I can. I know that you know it, it can tell me this error, right? But if my drill is like this, horizontal, and I try to tilt left and right, the accelerometer cannot give me data on the error, right? So I guess this is still an open question on how we can solve that problem where your drill is like pressed flat against the wall, right? And we just need more work on it. Um, so the future work, well, basically more 3D printed mounts for various types of tools out there. Um, one thing I was thinking about is that, hey, you know, we don't really, it's not just constrained to a drill if some of you use Jigsaws, right? If you want to use a jigsaw to cut in a straight line, how many of you cut a wobbly line when you're trying to uh, cut a panel? Yeah. Um, oscillating tool. Uh, if I use oscillating tool to like do small precision work, you try to measure distance. There's no distance measure. You try to put a, a ruler beside it. Right? It's kind of, you know, just wish those tools were smarter as well. Impact driver is similar to a drill, but it basically, I'll say in TLDR has more talk. Um, so if your, your angle of attack with the screw is incorrect, your screw will just like the you know, bolt will not be perpendicular to your surface. Yeah, um, and if I could have more distance sensors on drill, what happens is that, okay, I could measure the distance of the drill bit from the floor, from a, the walls, the reference point, etc. Okay, so I think the question to everyone is like, do you think such improvements will be useful for your tools? Yeah, so if, if such things were exist, will you like 3D print, you know, try to add this stuff on your tools? From what Marjorie means, we can just fix and play, like, uh, yeah, I can play kind of things that we can make it easy. Okay. Yeah, um, any questions? How do you make sure the sensor is actually perpendicular to the tool? Yes, okay, so, um, okay, so this will be mostly. Of calibration. I mean, this I kind of like calibrated by sight, right? But in reality, if you have a 3D print for this particular drill, you would be able to, you know, like screw on your mount and the sensor would be integrated into your print, into your printed mount, right? Ideally, you have a mount. I'm just like gluing it onto the drill over here. So, you know, it's kind of ghetto, but yeah. Um, so, generally, like if you if you do this, you will need to basically have a uh, you know, accurate, um, a, a rather reliable 3D printer. I mean, a 3D printer is totally uncalibrated. You're not going to get anywhere. Yeah. I'm just going to pass this around. Uh, try not to. It's just kind of like stuck on the port blue. So, yeah. Yes. So, so the example that you mentioned were all just detecting, but then you thought that, for example, if I want to build a certain oh. step, and you thought of actually turning the drill off when you keep that step, and similarly, you know, turning the drill off when you're off the angle that you want. So, this has nothing, like it does not integrate with the electronics of the drill. So, you would have to, like, be, you know, read it out and compare yeah, it. Yeah, that's one thing that you thought about extending it in that direction. <laughs> 
Yeah, you definitely need uh, more work if you want those features. It's just like good, I think it's really, really useful. Why isn't like Makita and Lord actually doing it? Or it is, but it's too expensive. Okay, so one thing that we know that uh, you want Makita, they are usually making tools for construction people, right? Um, well, construction people have more advanced tools, they have more cable, they carry more stuff with them. And number two is that they are probably more rough. So if you put something like a touch screen, they are likely damage it. So unless you have, I mean, I'm sure someone is doing some R and D on it, um, but I don't think it is something that will hit mainstream that soon. So maybe the necessity to be really perpendicular to is not there. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, so there are other tools like you can external label, laser level, you know. If you get those those things, then you wouldn't need it on your drill itself. But for small timers, let's say an obvious user, you're not gonna spend like three hundred dollars on a laser level. You're not gonna, you, know, you just hope that instead of using other hand tools, you just hope that your one and only investment right, in a hand drill has, has more features in it. Right? Like like a home user, you you let's say you use a laptop versus a uh, someone who has uses a workstation at work. Like your workstation at work is like so powerful and at work you have the ability to get so much more devices. But at home you just want something like all in one on one laptop on one PC. Right? I think it's just a different target market. Mm -hmm. So the labels for what sensor we use? Uh, they go for the the the, the split level uh, okay. what sensor we use? No, it's just a accelerometer. So it comes it is internal yeah. to the uh, to that module itself, I think it's a uh, something say it's 686. Yeah, you can connect one more thermometer to differentiate the plane. You are saying, like, on the plane only by a switch, you can shift the plane and you can shift the reading. Thing. Yeah, you can definitely add more sensors, but again, you know, more complexity, okay. more cost. Yeah, have you thought of adding another tier to the opposite side of the axis and use the offset to? Uh, yeah, that's very good. Uh, yeah, that, that is definitely possible. I only have one at the, at the current point in time. How, how much is each of them? Yeah, about ten bucks. Yeah, and the touch screen and only that is ten bucks. Uh, that is the M five stack core module. That is about thirty bucks. Yeah. But I really like those uh, modules because if you use a ESP thirty two on its own, it's kind of painful. You know, you don't you have to connect everything else to it. And I like this module because it's just thirty bucks and. It, as all is really great for prototyping. Yeah. We have four of the nine of the type flight modules, and then you can do that. Yeah, if you have four of those, then you can definitely like put them uh, around your drill bit, like, and you can kind of like you know, ensure that you are perpendicular to the surface, or let's say you want a 40, like you want you want a 25 degree, you can angle yourself, do a reading, zero in and Able to use it. That's possible as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, any more questions, comments? Otherwise, sometime in future, I will put up the online repository right, and uh, any like related works. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.